Well, good day viewers. Today we're working outside briefly anyways. We got a 2015 F-150 and the history of this thing is apparently it had a plow assembly installed and they were doing some wiring and blew a fuse. And once they fixed that, then the vehicle wouldn't crank and then it would crank but it wouldn't start. And then they left it sitting with the battery disconnected for several hours and it was fine after but now it's a crank no start condition. So I'm going to have a look at some warning lights, put the key in the ignition, check engine light is on, and we're going to confirm the condition. We want to watch to see if that check engine light goes out when we crank it. Okay, I don't think I heard the fuel pump run when I put the key in. Let's turn the key on again. Yeah, I heard the fuel pump prime. All right, let's set it up with the scan tool and see if we got any codes. Okay, so this is a new vehicle ID. As you can see, it's got 176,000 kilometers on it. Let's do a code scan, pre-scan. Key is on, engine is not running. Obviously, we wouldn't be here. Tire pressure sensor. Where's the engine control computer? Hmm. How far we got so far through this code list? Just TPMS codes, but I didn't see the engine control computer populate here. Get rid of that. Codes and monitors for this vehicle can be accessed using UOBD2. Hmm. Didn't see it. Didn't see it scan the ECM. Let's turn the key off. Let's try scanning the ECM by itself. Codes menu. Memory codes. Continue. Oil pressure sensor. I'm like, why didn't it scan the engine control module? That's weird. Circuit range performance. Well, that shouldn't stop it from firing. So let's look at pending codes and see if there's any pending codes. No pending codes. And I'm going to do a key on engine off test because it's cold. Data. Have a look at some engine management data. Like... Injector pulse width. I don't think it has injector pulse width. I'm going to build a custom data list here. So now we get no communication with the ECM again. Yet the check engine light is coming on and going off, indicating that it's I cycled the key. Let's see if the accelerator pedal position sensor reading is live. Boy, that's slow. Look at the refresh rate of the scan tool. I'm going to have a look around in here. So I was looking at data and noting the temperature and the barometric pressure and we lost communication with the scan tool again, or with the uh, ECM while I was viewing data. Hmm. 
Maybe because the key shut off. That's weird. This truck is on a trailer, so I can't bring it in the shop very easily. Let's see if we got an RPM signal while cranking. Yes, we do. Well, maybe we should check fuel pressure. But why are we losing communication? I turned the key off, that's why we lost it that time. Turn power off to save battery. Well, I'm gonna have to get this thing inside. So we got it in the shop battery charger on it set it's 13.6 volts let's have a look at some data parameters now so we're looking at engine data now ambient temperature is 3 celsius that's reasonable barometric pressure is 28.6 155 hertz Cylinder head temperature is 4.7 volts. Over on this side, it should have cylinder head temperature in degrees. We're going to watch this cam crank synchronized, although there is a reference signal, so it should run without the cam sensor. Cylinder head temperature minus 8, that's reasonable. Engine revolutions per minute. I wonder if this one's got fuel pressure. Fuel system monitor. Fueling disabled. Crank fueling disabled. Yes. Why does it say crank fueling disabled? Yes. Hmm, that's weird. I'm hoping fuel pressure is in this data list. I didn't look to see if this has a level is 61, 51%. Fuel pump duty cycle, fuel pump monitor, fuel system status. We're going to have a look to see if it's got a fuel pre rail pressure sensor on it. So we're looking under the hood here and I don't see a fuel rail pressure sensor. It is a returnless system and I don't see a pressure tap on it. So I think I'm going to try and run it on alternative fuel a little propane torch introduce propane into this air action nipple here and see if it'll start so we've got a propane bottle hooked up to a little torch tip and I'm going to introduce propane into the air induction system while it's cranking let's see if it'll start Okay, that didn't work, so we're going to check for spark. So I noticed after about five minutes of inactivity with the key in the run position, it turns off and you have to cycle the key off and back on. So that could be why we're losing data, but I'm not sure. I got the key on, and I got test lights connected to the coil. And that test light there is connected to the coil. Oh, it just came on. Like... What the hell? And this light's connected to the injector. And it's not grounding it, but I'm grounding it through a test light. So let's see if that flashes well while it's cranking. I have to put that up where I can see it. And this is on the control side of the coil on the black wire. There's a common colored wire, but that wasn't on when I walked out here a few minutes ago. Okay, I'm going to set up here. So the light that's on now is on because of the power to the ignition coil. I swear it wasn't on initially. It just came on. And the second test light, the lower one, is connected to the uh, injector. So we're going to watch for an injector pulse.
This is about an injector pulse because then it's running. And it just quit and you see the power went away from the ignition. So I wonder, did something to the fuse. Because that, that test light should be on now. Where's the fuse box in this thing? And put a plow harness on here. Looks like we got, oh, that's for the plow. That's all plow stuff. The fuse box is in here. came back on. Hmm. That's strange. I bet you it'll run again. Let's plug that injector in. So it's firing on all eight cylinders. So we got a Power feed to the ignition circuit, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, we're losing the ignition power to the ignition coils. I come over here and have a look. Just came back on. He said something about a whole block of fuses was malfunctioned, was powered out. He said they burned a fuse when they were hooking up the... Hmm. I'm wiggling the wires. get a diagram and see what fuse feeds that. So here's the wiring diagram. I was right, the pink wire is the power wire and it comes from fuse 99 in the battery junction box. Goes through connector 139 to a splice 136 and then 138. So we're on coil on plug number one on the control wire and of course if it's not grounding it, it should be on now and we're losing power so we're going to go find this fuse and connector 139 where is connector 139 and what does it look like oh that's that big rectangular connector with the uh, alternator feed going through it and 139 should be right beside the battery is there. So it's right on top of the engine basically. Let's go see if we can find that and fuse fuse 99. So fuse 99 is the third one down on the right hand side there. So that would be that 10 amp fuse. Let's see. 101, 199, 101, 101, 99. So it's this 10 amp fuse here. I'm wiggling the fuse. Oh, look at that. Wiggle the fuse and the test light goes out. Seriously? All I'm doing is wiggling the fuse. Actually, 
wiggling the fuse behind it, um, the 25 amp fuse, so maybe there's a connection problem here. Hmm. You don't like the fact that water drips into this fuse panel when you have the hood open and snow on it. Let's pull that fuse out and have a look at the legs on it. Because fuse 99 is this one right here, this 10 amp. And if I wiggle it, you can see the light goes on and off. But if I pull it out, the light's still on. Unless I'm counting, oh no, it's the 20 amp fuse, this one here. Definitely compromised in that fuse box or something. I'm going to check pin drag on those two fuse terminals. So it's actually this 20, 20 amp fuse that's 99, not this 10 amp fuse. But there's no pin drag on the left side of this fuse. This side is good, but this side is spread apart somehow. I'm not sure what happened there. If Somebody tried to jam a fuse cheater in there and spread the terminal apart inside. Hmm. Because the fuse looks good. The fuse itself looks good. I'm going to see if I can reshape that terminal. It looks like a conventional terminal from the top. I wonder if that white plastic insert comes out of there if I take all the fuses out. I'm just going to take a picture of this. So that little white piece does come out of there once you pull all the fuses out. You could just get a little hook tool underneath it and pull it straight up. So it's, it's this terminal. There's my test terminal here. It's this terminal right here that is compromised. This one's okay. You can see it's got good grip, but this terminal has no grip whatsoever. So I'm going to try and get a needle in there and reshape that terminal. Huh. Now we're here, we'll check the rest of them. They seem okay. All four of these terminals are on the same bus bar because if you move it, you can see the all of them moving. Oh, my battery charger just popped off. All right, try and fix that terminal. So there's the fuses back in there. I managed to reshape that terminal. I did put a little bend on the end of the fuse to make it sort of shaped like this to make it a little wider. We're going to check to see if that light flickers when I manipulate the fuse. So I got the key on. And I'm wiggling that fuse. And no flickering light. So we're going to blow the water out of this fuse panel. Put the cover back on. And see if how it runs. Well, there it is back together and running. Call this one a wrap. Thanks for watching.